you see is basically you see that these dotted lines appear over here showing that what's my start row that I selected and what's the number of rows I selected. The dotted lines only show up if you have the measurement row overlay parameter set to zero and you will be changing your start row and number of rows in the measurement tab and not the image tab. Once you have this configured the other parameters that are of interest in the measurement tab that you should be aware of is uh, there is a trig mode. What the trig mode does is you can see it uh, when you click on it you will see what the parameter stands for over here. Zero stands for no trig means it's free running therefore profiles are acquired immediately one after another. The problem with this is if you have a conveyor or a pop whereby the speed is variable if the profiles are acquired immediately one after another you will get either skewed shrinked or elongated images based on the speed of the conveyor in order to make sure that you have equidistance profiles what you need to do is you need to use an encoder when you use an encoder then the profiles are acquired only after a certain number of encoder pulses are received based on how you configure it and this makes sure that we have equidistance profiles therefore our image is based on a certain scale. This next parameter over here defines as far as how many pulse the number of pulses per trigger. This means that uh, if I let's say put down over here 40 what this means is that the camera ex expects 40 pulses before it, it, it will acquire a next profile. So if you think about it if this number is a small number it means that I want a really high resolution as far as uh, you know the distance between consecutive profiles is going to be very small and if this number is a large number numerically this means that I'm having more gap between the consecutive profiles I'm acquiring you should use an encoder which is a 5 volts TTL input to the camera and also uh, you should have at least um, 30 to 40 pulses um, for the camera in order to acquire uh, between profiles you you can have uh, a high resolution encoder if you want a high resolution uh, uh, between uh, multiple profiles that's okay but you want to have at least 40 pulses 30 to 40 pulses going into the camera before you acquire a profile this makes sure that if the encoder slips uh, you know you don't lose profiles in between the next parameter over here which is use enable this stands for a photo eye and again here zero means no enable means we are not using a photo eye so as soon as we have acquired one image or one set of uh, buffer or one set of data with multiple profiles we will immediately acquire the next buffer when you put down one over here though what that means is that the camera is not gonna acquire or it's not gonna start acquisition until it sees a leading edge from a from a photo eye uh, when it sees that photo eye trigger then the camera is going to start acquiring that image and it will acquire uh, profiles within that image based on uh, you know how you have your encoder parameters or the trig mode set configured. Finally uh, we will uh, also replicate the exposure time from the previous setting so we will set this to 1500 as we had seen in the image mode. One more parameter that I should have mentioned is uh, the scan height parameter remember when we started this video we did uh, <coughs> a lines per frame parameter that was how many profiles or lines determine or make up a buffer but that's with respect to the PC this is how many profiles or lines make up a buffer with respect to the camera so you want the scan height to be the same as the lines per frame parameter this makes sure that the the way the PC updates an image is the same as the way you want uh, the camera basically to update the buffer within its own uh, memory. So these two parameters should be configured to be the same. With this we can go ahead and start our measurement mode. So what we see now is I scanned the soap bar all the way left to right and then went back so I have two scans over here. This is because I my scan height is 512, but I only know, need probably half of that in order to acquire the data that I am interested in. That's why what happens is it doesn't update the image immediately. It scanned the 
it scanned uh, 256 profiles uh, f to get that one, so one, one image of that soap but in order to for the screen to update it needed the other 256 so I had to go back again and when it was 512 altogether that's when I got the update over here on the screen so that's what my screen looks like you can right click and go to the 3D zoom window and uh, you should be able to open up this yellow box and there is also a high 3D visualization window that pops up hand in hand uh, the image looks distorted first you need to go and move around this yellow box around the 3D grayscale image I call it a grayscale image because whatever is brighter is higher on the plane whatever is darker is lower on the plane this is a 3D grayscale image on and not a 2D grayscale image now if you go back to this image you can kind of see what the soap bar looks like okay so this is a 3D image that I came back with this is not a perfect image there is still a lot of work to be done probably uh, to get to make this look much better uh, but at least it gives you an idea of how I can start acquiring a 3D image you also get uh, intensity data over here on this tab and this is what the intensity data looks like uh, this is from the laser intensity so it's not the this is a grayscale image but it's not the best grayscale image if you indeed need a grayscale image there is a high resolution uh, uh, row for grayscale data in the range of uh, some of, in some of the ranger models uh, you can also use a combination of the white light and then uh, acquire a grays grayscale data on other regions of the sensor and that, that will be much better looking and you should be able to use it better than the default or bonus intensity data that you get uh, that comes out of the laser. The other functionality that we have available is there is something that's called uh, mouse, or inf mouse over information and this is what the mouse over information looks like so let's say if you are having issues with your encoder and you can't figure out whether your encoder is working or not uh, what you can do is uh, if you go in your edit parameters uh, there is something that's called uh, mark you can enable uh, the mark data so I have the mark data uh, set to one over here and now uh, what I can do is uh, I can go and make my trig mode go to zero so now I will not be using an encoder at all this is because if you had the encoder working you would not be doing this I mean you you would be able you are able the issue is that you are able to get data in free running mode but not encoder control mode so if you have this set to zero you will be able to get the data without any problems now once I have that configured I can go ahead and say start so this is the image that came out of uh, the free running mode over here and I can go back to the to the mouse over information uh, you can see that uh, as I move my mouse over here uh, we have this uh, enable so it shows us you know when the photo I triggered there is also uh, these digits over here uh, give us the actual encoder pulses over here so you can at least tell that your encoder is working and then in channel A it's marking it with a 0101 showing us that channel A is connected and it's working fine on the other hand channel B obviously it's just zero so it's not connected at all so depending, depending on how you have connected it you know you should be able to figure out this diagnostic information should help you uh, in, make, in ensuring if your encoder is working and generating the proper pulses and signals or not. It's difficult to uh, cover all the uh, parameters, all the aspects and all the capabilities of the Ranger camera or the Ranger studio within this uh, small tutorial uh, video but hopefully this gives the user enough information to get started and play around more with these parameters because it all comes down to tweaking these parameters and making sure that you are getting a decent image. Uh, getting a decent image is pretty much uh, 80 to 90 percent of the application so tweaking those parameters will ensure once you get this decent image you can then export this image to the PC and then be able to apply your image processing algorithms onto it thank you for your attention